welcome back to another week of Kidopolis. Um, most of you probably know that I miss Jesse and I'm here to teach you this week's lesson. Um, Jacob sent out an email with the so-and-so show, which you should definitely watch. There's some good stuff in there. Um, and also this week, there's a few extra links for a surprise I'll talk about later. Um, we are here by my wall. I talked about this last week. Um, this was a project that I started I had been wanting to do for a long time, and it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. It gave me a lot of uh, tricky moments, and um, it was just really, it was a lot tougher than I thought. And then I saw our um, theme for the month is unstuck. Don't give up. Okay? So I definitely felt like giving up especially after the first two times that I measured these diamonds, it did not look right and I had to start over twice. But um, because of you guys mostly and because um, I was very determined and I decided to listen to the things that I was teaching and stick through with what I had done, my wall's finished. Um, and as you can imagine, I don't know if you saw last week when it had tape on it, but it involves a lot of tape, a lot of sticky tape, right? And that's what this um, month of May is all about, is getting in sticky situations and God giving you what you need to get through it, okay? So, that is, the, the word was determination, deciding it's worth to finish what you started, okay? I decided it was worth it to finish it because this wall, well, it wasn't very pretty to begin with. This was something that I really wanted to do and then I told you guys I was gonna do it and I wanted to stick to my word. I told a lot of people I was gonna do it, so I stuck to my word. I was determined, I had determination. And I had God to give me a little bit of strength too. Okay, so the story last week was um, Jesus gave his friends a very important job. He said, go and tell everybody all about me. I want people to know um, that I died for their sins and that I came up, I rose from the dead, and um, I walked among you again, okay? I want everybody to know that, and I want them to know what they need to do to be with me. That's a really big job. I don't know about you, but that way I would feel like I was in a really sticky situation, especially, especially, after Jesus left again, he went to heaven to be with God. That seems like it'd be really tricky. The guy who was doing all this amazing stuff, all these miracles, he literally came back up from the dead and he gave us this huge job of spreading the word to all the corners of the earth and then he leaves us. Good thing he made a promise before he went. He promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to help him. So we're gonna go over that Bible story. Um, it is in the book of Acts. So I'll give you a minute to flip there if you want to follow along. All right, guys, so we are in the book of Acts. That is after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. Um, just to refresh you, um, Jesus told his disciples, hey, you got to tell everybody about me and about what I did, um, but I'm going to go to heaven to hang out with God. So luckily by now, the disciples, they were, they, they had some pretty good faith in God and they were waiting around to figure out what help they were gonna get after he left. So here we go. This is Acts chapter two, verse two. And I'm gonna read through verse four. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Whoa, can you imagine just sitting in your house, hanging out, maybe playing cards, Maybe watching TV, maybe crocheting, who knows what your hobby is, right? Just sitting there and all of a sudden this wind just comes through. I wouldn't want to be in that house. I'd be a little bit worried. Who knows? But if you were expecting God, then maybe, maybe you would, that's exactly where you would want to be. You knew something big was coming. They saw, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Yikers. Let's see what happens, okay? This is the really cool part. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, which is a word for languages, as the Spirit enabled them. So, I'm going to put this into Miss Jessie words, okay? They were hanging out. Hanging out, waiting to see 
what help Jesus was going to give them to spread um, his word to the entire earth. This wind came. If they had nice hairdo, forget it. It's gone. Then this flame came, and it just came and sat right with them. But... Then all of a sudden they were to speak be, they were able to speak all of these languages. So imagine if you had to go and tell the whole world about God, how many languages you would have to know. I don't know how many languages there are, but there's certainly hundreds. So there probably aren't thousands or even hundreds of languages here in Lafayette where I live. But for the most part, when I go up to somebody and I say these three words, the basic truth that Jesus is Lord, they understand what those words mean. If not in here, they at least understand it here and we can have a conversation for them to get it here, right? But there might be situations where I go to a different country or somebody from a different country comes to speak to me and we don't understand the same language as each other. Um, Jesus gave his disciples the gift of well, the Holy Spirit came and gave them the gift of speaking tongues that night. That's what we call Pentecost. But that probably won't happen if I'm trying to speak to somebody um, in the middle of the Target or Walmart here in Lafayette, right? So luckily, we have a lot of other tools to help us interact with people that we're not used to interacting with. And today I just came up with, um, for fun, um, some note cards for us to learn uh, how to say Jesus is the Lord, and five different languages that you and I probably don't speak on a regular basis. I'm going to shuffle them just so they come in a random order. And that fun surprise that I talked about earlier in the email is there's at least three videos um, that have worship songs in a different language that use these phrases. Okay? <clears throat> so if I mispronounce these, I'm really sorry. I only took Spanish in high school, so... Um, the other pronunciations might be a little outside of my wheelhouse, okay? So, here is French. I want you to say it with me, okay? I'll say it once, and I'll give you a chance to say it, and then we'll say it together, okay? How do you say the J in French? I'm just gonna say J, okay. Jesus, Jesus es Señor. So now you say it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know French. So let's say it together. Jesus est Señor. I looked up this, but I didn't look up how to spell a J. Okay. Maybe write this down and you can practice saying it, okay? And don't forget, you can always press pause if there's ever a time that there's something that you want to write down, take a picture of with your uh, iPad or your phone or whatever, okay? Next, what language is going to be next? Ooh, Japanese. This one's gonna be tricky for Miss Jessie. I actually, um, I did take Japanese in fifth grade. My school offered it, so I can count to 10 in Japanese. I'll do it after we say, um, after. how about after the video, okay guys? So, Iesu wa omodesu. Can you say that? Let's say it together. Iesu wa omodesu. Desu. That's fun. All right. What's next? Swahili. Swahili. So this is from, I think, the Swaziland and Africa. So many different languages, different dialects in Africa. There's even people who, like, their tribes are right next to each other, and they speak different, um, completely different languages, or at least different dialects. So let's try this. Yesu. Nibwana. I looked that one up. This is one of our songs. This is one of the songs that got sent out. Can you say this? Let's say it together. Yesu Nibwana. Hopefully I'm doing that justice. Listen to the song. This one's a fun song, you guys. <clears throat> Spanish. Miss Jessie's got this, okay? Spanish. Jesus es el señor. All right, can you say it? Good, now let's say it together. Jesus es el Señor. Is that it? Oh, nope, we got German. I actually watched a show in German with the subtitles, so maybe, maybe I got this one. Ooh, I don't know the J though. Js are tricky in other languages. Ja. Hang on, I'm gonna consult my experts. Ia? I, so how do you say Jesus? Yeah. Jesus ist der Herr. How do you say Jesus again? 
Jesus. Jesus is there. Her. her. <laughs> I hope you had fun practicing all of those um, new phrases. It's actually the same phrase, Jesus is Lord, but it was in um, those different languages. Um, it's important to try new things, especially when it comes to uh, talking to people about Jesus, okay? So, now I'm going to talk about one man who was there the night that the wind and the flames and the languages came. His name is Peter. And he stood right up and he's like, all right, let's go do this. We need to talk to people. So he stood up and he was in Jerusalem and he went and there were 3,000 people. There were probably more, but I'm going to read what he said to these people. And this is important too when we're talking about Jesus. This, this is like our instructions, okay, of what we need to do to follow Jesus. He said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So he said that, and can you believe it? 3,000 people were baptized that day. 3,000 people chose to follow Jesus, okay? So we have Peter. Peter is one person, okay? He was one of 12, but this is one person speaking the word. And I went ahead and I tried to measure out as best as I could. I weighed them. I cheated a little. 3,000 Cheerios. One person with the word of God and the Holy Spirit was able to make a difference in the lives of all of these 3,000 people that day. And each of these people, let me grab a random one. This guy, what should we call him? I'm going to call him Iago. And Iago can go ahead and tell his, tell his side of the story, which is Jesus' side, we'll say, to 3,000 people, and they can be baptized. And each of those 3,000 people, even this one down here, her name is Inga. Inga, she probably speaks German, okay? She's going to go tell all her friends. And can you imagine if every single one of these 3,000 people got 3,000 people baptized? would not be able to hold that in my hands. Eventually, my entire house would be filled with Cheerios. So, just know how important it is for you to pay attention when people are talking to you about Jesus. And how important it is for you to share your story. Okay? So... One more important thing that we've been going through is to not get caught up when things seem sticky. We have to have our determination, deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Just like the disciples who so many times, let's go over those sticky situations, okay? Jesus was captured by the enemy. Oh no. Well, then he died on the cross, Ooh, but he rose again. And then um, some of them didn't even recognize him at first, but then they did. And then he gave them this huge task, huge task. Go and tell everybody about me, right? He did that. Um, and then he, he kind of just backed away. He went to heaven to spend time with God, but he gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit. Time and time again, Jesus made sure that the people had what they needed, okay? So it is important for us when we are feeling tired, when we're feeling stuck, we need to know that we are unstuck. Jesus makes us unstuck. Don't give up. God gives us what we need. So um, I'm going to go over our memory verses next. And then I have a fun activity for you guys to try with your families. Okay, so now we're going to go over our memory verses. We have two memory verses. This is what we're going to be doing for a while. We have one that I'm calling the Versity and one the Junior Versity. So if the first verse that I tell you is a little bit too tricky, a little bit too much to memorize, don't worry, we have a second verse that might be a little bit easier. And don't worry if you're in the Junior Versity. That is awesome. The most important thing is that we're just memorizing these verses here and here so that we can take it there, okay? So... I'm going to go over the first verse. I'm not going to find it in the Bible because I promised that we would do that with the second verse this week, the junior versity. So here is our versity. 
This is for our older kids. I'm saying probably like first grade and up. Um, but anybody's welcome to try any of the verses that they want. So this is from Galatians 6, 9. That's chapter 6, verse 9. Um, and don't worry, you can pause your TV if you want to get a good look at this, okay? Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Don't give up, guys. At the right time, the crop is going to come. You're going to get your reward. Don't get tired of doing the good thing, the right thing, what you need to do, okay? Remember, that was from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And if you send me a video um, in any way, email, Facebook, text, whatever, if you want to come and sit on my front porch and yell it at me, um, that works too. And you will get a memory verse treat. So, this is for our younger kiddos, okay? Um, or just anybody who thinks that the other verse was a little bit too much to memorize the first go. This is our Junior Versity Memory Verse. And this is from... Second Thessalonians. Oh, I'm, I'm finding it without even trying to show you how I find it. So in your Bible, you're going to find the, it's usually at the beginning where it shows you the order of the books. In my Bible, we have them um, in the order that they are in the Bible, chronologically. And then I also have them alphabetically. So I, you can choose either way, whatever is easiest for you. I, um, if you happen to know roundabout where the book is that you're looking for in the Bible, you might go here. If you have no idea, go alphabetically. Um, well, I, I know that Second Thessalonians is um, a letter from Paul, so it's in the New Testament. So I would find it there. But um, just to keep up with trying new things and trying things different ways, let's find it alphabetically. T is after S and before U. So let's see. It's going to be towards the end of the alphabet, right? Oh, there we are. Second, second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. In my Bible, it's on page 657, okay? So I'm going to go to page 657. Then we'll break it down even more to make sure that we get the right verse. Okay. So here we are. See? Second. That's what the two says. Two Thessalonians. Paul wrote this letter to the people of Thessalonica. Okay? So, it is chapter 3. So, we're going to find the big number 3. There's 1, 2, 3. See how big it is? It's as big as two lines of text. And then, we're going to take our finger and we're going to run it down until we find 13. Do, 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 do. There it is. Oh my gosh, I have it underlined in here. I wonder if I did that for you guys. I don't think I did. All right, so we found the big number, little number, and now we're going to read it. And I'm actually going to read it from the paper just so you have something nice to look at. All right, as for you, brothers, do not grow tired in doing good. That's from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. As for you, brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles and aunts and grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads and everybody, but Paul is talking to his friends in Thessalonica, do not tire, grow tired in doing good. All right, you think you can memorize that? I bet you can. Don't forget to send me those videos, okay, guys? All right, guys, we're going to do one activity. Um, I'm going to tell you how to do it, and then I'm hoping that we get some really good pictures of the results from you guys. Our girls are going to do it, and we're going to post some pictures on the church Facebook page, so keep an eye out for those. This is a really easy activity. Um, so the first thing that you need to know is that probably not anytime soon am I or you or your mom or your dad or anybody you know going to be traveling to the ends of the earth. We have been in our homes, and we've been walking around our neighborhoods, so we can at least travel to the ends of our neighborhood, right? Safely with an adult. So when you do that, what I want you to do is put yourself in a sticky situation. You're gonna take some tape, and you're just gonna wrap it around your hand. I already have it on my right hand, and you really only need to do one, but I'm gonna do both just for funsies, okay? 
You can even do this around your wrist if that's a little bit easier. You don't need to tape your fingers. The point is that you just have a sticky surface. Okay? So, it is springtime. There are so many beautiful things sprouting up. Clovers, dandelions, I think they're pretty. Um, the grass is nice. There's even some uh, blooming trees. I don't know about you, but I love to collect those pretty things on my walk. So, this is a really handy way for you to do that. So when you go on your walk, you have your tape. I'm gonna duck out of the camera for a second. And let's say I found this piece of crayon on my walk, okay? And I wanna take it home because I just think it's so pretty. I'm just gonna stick it there and then can keep going about my walk. People might look at you funny, but then you can, that's such a great opportunity when you're being a little funny. Sometimes you can open up a conversation and maybe you can turn it to, hey, my Sunday school teacher, she told me to go for a walk with sticky hands, and then I can tell people all about how Jesus got us unstuck. Does that sound cool? I think it does. We're definitely going to do that, so keep an eye out for those pictures. Now we're going to pray, and then we're going to um, have a great week, right? You're going to watch the so-and-so first, so-and-so show first, and then have a great week. So let's pray, okay? As always, send me any prayer requests you have. You can keep them secret or not secret. You just let me know. I'll keep them secret unless you tell me otherwise. And then we'll uh, come here and we'll talk about it on Sunday. Dear God, thank you so much for another week. Thank you for springtime and beautiful weather. Thank you for all the things that you give us to help us get unstuck. Thank you for your word and thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for our church and the kiddos who I miss so much. And I just pray that they're having a great time. They're learning so much about themselves and their family and you in this time of quarantine. Can't wait for this to be over, God, and see all my kiddos. Um, I pray that you keep us all healthy. And I just thank you for everything you've given us to make the sticky time a little less sticky. Thank you so much. We pray it all in your son's name. Amen. All right, have a good week, guys.